everyone. Welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith, and we're here at the GTS Distribution Come and Play Day in Atlanta 2016. And I'm here with Pat McDonald from Osprey Games. No, that's not right. No, that's not right at all. I'm here with Pat McDonald of Watch It Played. Yes. Uh, we're going to be here to demonstrate to you a game from Osprey, though, and it is... Agamemnon. Right, thank you for saying that. You're welcome. <laughs> I was afraid I would trip over it. <laughs> this is a game that they're not able to be here, but we wanted to showcase this for you. And uh, we've got it set up here on the table. And maybe we can talk a little bit about what this game thematically represents. The idea is that we are gods who are manipulating the strings of fate of the armies of Troy and Greece, each of us wanting to manipulate things for one of those uh, armies' favor, because we each will represent one of them. Go Troy! Go Greece! <laughs> so we'll move this out of the way. We've got the, the board set up here in front of us. In fact, maybe you can take us on a little tour here of kind of what we're looking at. So we have the board set up already. These rectangular tokens are strings, and they are set onto the matching spots on the board. And we also have these circular discs. Now, normally you would not start the game with any of these on here. We've sort of advanced the game a little bit, but normally these would be, these would be empty spaces. But what's important to notice is when you have these string tiles, and they're connected by the circular centers here. So here we have a connection of these orange-looking ones. I forget what these are called. What are they? Those are called strength. That's strength, OK? So we're going to be fighting over, for example, this strength path. But we have other paths as well. For example, there's a long one here using these. Which, which one are these called? Force. So here's, here's a long force path like that. And that's we also really have, long. That is a, that's a very long one. And we have a, another type here, this uh, little squiggly line, which is? That's leadership. Leadership. And then here's a path of leadership. So we have various different paths around the board, and we're going to be fighting over them by placing these discs on them. So we've already done that a bit. But we're going to place some more here and show you wh why you would place certain discs in certain spots and how that will give you the influence over these different strings. So normally in the game, at the very beginning, you'll have this pool of these discs in front of you that are mixed up and randomized, right? And the first player would take one and flip it over and play it. Just one. Just a single one. And then the next person would actually flip two. two. And then it would be two for the rest of the game, back and forth, until you get to the very end. So we've already gone past the first turn, so I'll be flipping over two of them, which I will pick. And again, these would be all mixed up, so I'm not sure which ones I'm drawing. And I've gained these two here. This one's known as a warrior, and we have a little cheat sheet here showing you exactly what comes in your army. And the strength of these is based on the number of pictured spears. So this is a, a warrior with a strength of two. And this will gain influence over these orange tiles, which also show spears on them. So I want to gain more influence here. So if I place this here within this path, and I add up my number of spears. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have a strength of six on this path. And Pep, you have one, two here. Yes, and I also have a leader. And that leader has a few spears showing as well. Right, leaders have their own special properties, like we'll see in a moment. But they also do show spears. So they contribute to this type of string. So you can place either in this kind of string or in a leadership area, which you are, you're also on this path here. Right? Doubling so, up. OK, that was very smart when you did that earlier. <laughs> I did preset this up ahead of time. <laughs> Good. Well, I have another uh, token to place here. This one's a little different. Um, this is a, a warp, I believe, is what it's called. And so when I place this, I can swap two of the strings that are connected to that location. And I would like to put that, I'm going to put that right here, actually. And so now I can swap any of the two strings that are connected. And I'm going to take this one here away, and I'm going to push this one over here. So that's really important because as the board will start in an exact way, it's not going to look that way by the end of the game. Right, you can manipulate how those strings are laid out. And the reason why I did this is because Pep was originally connected here. His leader was on this path, which was with my leader, right? And how do, how do leaders win a path? Well, let's just jump over to my turn here. Okay. I'll flip them right to two tiles. Maybe I'll get a leader. Oh, look, I did. So the leaders win based on the letter that's showing on the leader themselves. Lowest letter is the best. So an A beats a B, B beats a C, and so on. Exactly. So, so when I was swapping here, Pep had a B on this path, and my C was losing to it. But by swapping, this is no longer on the same path. I'm the best leader on that path, right? Not for long, <laughs> okay. because I'm going to actually come on to, oh no, that path isn't connected down there. I'm going to have to go here. That's a shame. OK, so this means now, within this path, you have an A. I can't beat that. A can't beat a C. So Pep is now taking control of this path. But that's where something interesting could happen. What's and I that? will mention this. If somebody has matching letters, you simply ignore them and go to the next. So if, for example, you were to also place your A there in a future turn, 
we would both cancel our A's, yes. and your C would now be the next largest. So my C could still win it if I go and put my A in that position. All right. Exactly. You've got something uh, odd looking here. What's this do? This one is called a weft. Okay. Because I am forming a weft between the strings. After I place this, it separates all the strings that were normally connected. So okay. if I place it here, which is what I'm going to do, it now breaks this. At this point? At these that point. Split. So these are no longer connected. This is one group of combat or strength, yes. and this is another group of strength. Unfortunately, uh, it also yeah. separated the leadership here, which isn't too good for me. But you broke up my string, so no longer do I have, so I have three here in your group of five. You have five, so you've now won these strings. And if the game were to end right now, I would have control of, of these two strings here. Exactly. Now, the only other string we haven't talked about right. is the force. Okay. So the force is simply, you notice it has little circles on it yes. to help remind you that you're just counting circles. You're counting how many tokens you have within that group. So for example, within this group here, you have two tokens and I have none. It doesn't matter what the tokens are. Doesn't matter doesn't what the tokens color. are. Right. Exactly. Okay. And in this group here, I have one, two, three to your none. Nothing. So okay. we're both controlling our own four right. strings. And we, but we have more to place, and so we can continue to manipulate those strings. In fact, why don't we right now skip ahead to almost like let's let's just skip right to the end of the game. We'll set things up like we kept playing, and we'll show you how the scoring works. So as you can see, we've placed all of our discs except for my last one, which I will put here. And now it would be time to score and see who won. Yes, and so the player who played first will also play last and only have one action. Right. But you will get to pick between one of three spots, so it's not too bad. Let's see if this one, one works out for me. I think it's looking pretty good. All right, so now we're going to score up. Let's, you'd start with one of the string types, like these spears here. Combat. Combat. Strength. Okay. Strength. Well, let's see who has the most strength within this string. Remember this? Weft is cutting the path off here. So, Pep, I'm seeing you have five and I have three. So that would mean I would win this one. And when you win, you take the tokens here that make up the string and you put them in front of you. Cha-ching! So I now have three points. Excellent. And then over here on this half of that string that was cut off, I have the most because I have three. And I have none. That's right. So I will take these two. And you would continue scoring like this for all the same types of tokens. And it's important to note that you do not remove these discs until the end of the game. That way, if they're still affecting either the leadership or the force. Right. They might be connected to other strings. Like yeah. In other I mean, these two aren't. Yes. But let's just leave them. Leave them in place. Well, let's, let's, so you would continue scoring that type, but we'll just jump ahead here and show the scoring for, say, the leadership. Perfect. So let's take a look at this line. Again, it's split here by that weft. Right. But down here, we both have the two Ds, which That's means right. we would normally be tied. But then we go to the next <laughs> highest letter. I still have one left over here. And that would be the E that I just placed. And so that will give me priority on this entire path, right? It would. My E isn't connected anymore. No, that's right. It's, it's uh, separated by a different type, so it's not part of this string. So I'll collect these. Now, Pat, what would happen if there had been a perfect tie? In the case of a tie with whether it's strength or leadership or force, nobody gets the points. You just set them aside. You just take them off and remove them. Okay. Yeah, the only tiebreaker is the letters on the leadership. Right. If you have something that would break the tie and be a better, a better letter. Exactly. So again, you would complete all of the leadership tokens and score those. And now we'll move on to force. Let's do this big, long one here, because I won it. <laughs> Did you? OK. So again, you just count the number of your colored tokens that are on that path. So I have one, two, three, four. And I have one, two, three. Darn it, you won that one. <laughs> I'm glad we scored that one. So I'm going to be taking one, two, three, four, five, and six. That was a lot. Whoever has the most string tokens at the end of the game, they're the winner. Mm. I think it's going to be you in this one. We didn't fully count it up, but we'll call it a tie. All right, we'll call it a tie. We, we do that think I won. <laughs> so there are a couple of different ways to play this as well. Sure. So this is a, a preset up board, but if you flip it over, there's a side called the loom. I'm going to make a mess right now. Uh oh. There is another side. This is the loom. And this has. A very different setup of different paths here, right? It's not showing the same outline as we saw before that would match these different types. That's right. And so the game also comes with a few extra tokens. And you'll basically be drawing these randomly to decide where all of another type would go. So I'd okay. randomly draw this and say, OK, all the combat, all the strength is going to go into these now. I see. So the setup will be different. Um, there's a couple other variants as well. There is, instead of playing with your tiles hidden, you play with all of them revealed. You play with perfect information. Oh, I see. And you can also separate them into their three different types, like the warriors, the weavers, and right. the leaders. 
and then you choose from those groups which of the face so down ones you want to draw. So they're still face down, but you pick. I, I know I'm going to be grabbing a warrior if I go here, but I don't know exactly which warrior You don't know which one, yeah. Okay, I got you. So you know either, like maybe you grab a weaver, because you know I want a combat trick. I'm not sure which one I'm going to get, though. Sure. Okay, so that provides you a few different opportunities to either make the information very open or different amounts of obscurity, I guess. Yeah, so there's like a few different ways to play this game. Okay, well hopefully that gives you a pretty good sense of how Agamemnon? Agamemnon. Oh, I how that game works. And this is again by Osprey Publishing. And it is available. And until the next episode, thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.